Hello my friends, welcome to my very first yin yoga for you. I am Dr. Bree. This yin yoga practice is gonna be a way to really open up and release the pelvic floor and the hips, opening up the hip joints and really stretching into this part of the body. With yin yoga, you are going to need some props and this particular practice is definitely going to require blocks and a strap. So if you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a, a belt, just a regular belt, or you can even use like a dish towel, but you do have to have something to loop around your foot for our very first poses. So let's go ahead and just dive right in and I'll explain a little bit more about yin yoga as we go. The poses are held for a long period of time, so we'll have plenty of time to talk. So let's go ahead and come right into the first pose, which is reclining leg stretch. So you're gonna lie down on your back and you will wanna have your strap close by. So I'm gonna go ahead and come this way. Just carefully lower yourself down and come down through your elbow. Just a little tip for anyone with core and pelvic floor and maybe even low back issues. You don't just wanna jackknife down. You wanna come down onto your elbow and then roll onto your back. All right, so our very first stretch is going to be a reclining leg stretch. I want you to loop your strap or your belt or your dish towel around your foot. Now, the key with yin yoga poses is that they are very passive. So you're finding your edge, you're finding that point where you feel a really nice deep stretch, but you're not to the point of pain. Okay, the key here is to think about finding yourself at maybe a four or a five on a scale of zero, where zero is nothing, no sensation, and 10 is extreme sensation and maybe even pain. We absolutely do not want that, but we do want to feel something. So you want to really be getting deep into the joints, the connective tissues, the fascia. That's what we're going for here. But we want our muscles to be able to also relax into it. So it's a very fine kind of um, a balance here and you're gonna have to take a minute to really find your personal edge. Now, I like this strap because it has two loops where I can really hold on without having to work hard with my arms. I can just kind of let my arms be heavy and use my heavy arms to pull my leg back to the point where I can really feel a nice stretch in the whole back of the calf and the back of the leg. Now, you can keep this left leg, for me this is my left leg, you can keep it bent the entire time or you can also straighten it out. I encourage you to start with it bent and then you can move on to straightening it out as you kind of ease into the pose and it starts to feel softer and easier. So again, we are slightly active through the arms, but the leg should actually be quite relaxed. I'm gonna go ahead and find what works for me. Both hips are even on the ground. Maybe one side feels like it's popping up a little bit. Try to make sure that everything's resting really evenly on the ground, that you're sinking into the floor with your hips, with both sides of your pelvis. The strap is in a really nice position where you're not having to keep anything in your leg tense. Your leg is able to just let go. Again, your arms might be a little bit active, but your arms are the only thing. Your shoulders aren't hunched up, your neck isn't tense, your face is relaxed, and I want you to breathe. So we didn't start today's practice with a meditation or a breathing exercise because I thought I'd just explain it right now, right here. During these poses, which we will be holding each pose for anywhere between three and even longer minutes, maybe three to five minutes. I want you to think about breathing in whatever way feels really natural and good to you. Make it slow, make it easy, and make it deep. We don't want shallow, short breaths. We want slow, deep, and easy. I encourage you to try to make your breathing about equal between the inhale and the exhale if you're a beginner. So if you count, for example, three to four or even six counts on the inhale, Try to make it about the same for the exhale and really just come into the moment and come into your body. I'm gonna go ahead and ease my left leg, my bent leg down so it's now straight on the floor. 
And I'm also able to now pull my arms just a little bit more, bringing that straight leg a little bit more toward my face. Now, if this feels painful at all, if this is past your edge, then either bend up that bottom leg again, or you can also bend just a micro bend in this top leg, just a tiny micro bend, that's okay. I want you to feel the stretch in your hamstring, but everyone is gonna be different. It's really normal that on this first pose, your mind is gonna be a little bit all over the place, a little bit antsy. That's okay. I want you to try to just relax and soften. One more deep breath in and out. Now go ahead and bend the knee, bend up the bottom knee if it was straight. So now both legs are bent and shift so that this is my right leg. Now my right hand is gonna hold onto the strap and I'm gonna show you an option with and without the strap for half happy baby. So what I want you to do is bring this top leg, my right leg, bent at the knee and bring it so that the knee is working toward my shoulder. It's working toward the outside, so it's going out. It's not coming straight in, it's actually coming out to the side. So bring it down. This bottom leg you'll see is kind of flopped out to the side. So it's bent at the knee and kind of flopped out at the hip. This is a great opener for your pelvic floor and your hips. So just resting the left hand on the left flopped out leg. And again, holding onto the strap. The only thing really actively working right now is your arm. It's holding onto the strap, or if you don't need the strap, you can also remove the strap and hold on to the outside of the foot. So do what feels best for you. The legs and the hips are really open and easy. This arm is a little bit active and this hand is just resting on the inner thigh. If you need any props, you can place props under the knee on the bottom leg. That can help fill the space, fill this gap between the knee and the floor. And that can just allow your leg to feel more comfortable flopping and easing and opening. Yin yoga is a passive practice. We really want to not have our muscles be working and sometimes when there's a lot of space between our limbs and the floor, it can make our muscles want to hold on and tense up. So that's why having a blanket or a bolster or yoga blocks right here can be really helpful. So we're gonna be here for another minute or two. If you feel that your shoulders are tense or tight, try to relax them. Again, the only thing that should really be slightly active is maybe this arm that's holding up the happy baby leg, the half happy baby leg. Everything else is open. You're feeling a deep stretch in your joints, finding that edge, holding it and then being still. Last deep breath in and out. Now bring this top heel down toward your groin, releasing the leg. 
Bring your hands up to that happy baby leg. This one right here for me, it was my right leg. And just bring that knee in little circles if that feels good to you. Take it nice and slow, little tiny circles. You might even want to bring up the other leg and do stirring the pot. I love calling this stirring the pot. It's like you're holding on to big wooden stirring sticks and those are your legs and you're just stirring the pot, bringing your knees together and then apart, using your arms to guide your legs. One more time, stirring the pot. And now slide one leg out on the ground and then the other, ooh, you should definitely feel a little something on that leg that we really opened up. For me, it was my right leg. And then just bring both arms up and overhead. Stretch your body out long, deep breath. And take a moment to feel and sense that right side. It might feel a little bit different than your left. Just feel what you feel in your body for one deep breath. Maybe a warmth, a warm sensation. Maybe this right side feels a little longer. Maybe it feels a little closer to the floor. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we even things out with our left leg. So bring the strap around, loop it over around the ball of your foot. Play with where you like the strap to be. Maybe you like it a little farther back or maybe you like it a little closer up toward your head. Either way, it doesn't matter, whatever works for you. If you have a yoga strap that doesn't have these loops on the end, then you can also loop your arms around like that and that can help you not have to work so hard at gripping. So again, you can just go like this, loop it around. Or if you have a strap that's like mine, you can just grab onto these little handholds. We want to relax into it, holding it and being still and breathe. Never, ever, ever hold your breath. So find that spot where you're really feeling that nice stretch in the back of your thigh, the back of your calf, this hamstring area here. Feel that your pelvis is level on the ground. Sometimes for me, I feel like the side that's stretching, it's up. So we want to sink it down. I don't want to work at pressing it down, but I just want to let my body kind of unwind and allow everything to sink into the ground. That might mean that you can't stretch your leg as far back. It might mean that now your leg is down here and you're still feeling that stretch and that's okay. Everyone is different. Find your edge, which remember is about a four or a five on a scale of zero to 10. I'm gonna bring my leg a little closer. The only thing working is the arms, just a little bit. The leg is really relaxed. The pelvis is really relaxed. Now I am gonna stretch out my right leg. Now this leg that was bent, I'm gonna let it go ahead and relax on the ground. And just continue to sink into the pose. The more I sink into the pose, the more I'll be able to bring my leg a little closer. Not because I'm working or pulling with my leg and, and making and forcing this to happen, but really truly because my joints are opening, my connective tissues are opening, the fascia is opening, everything is releasing, and I'm able to deepen the stretch just a little bit. Breathe slowly and easily. Shoulders are relaxed, neck is relaxed. Back of the pelvis is sinking into the floor. One more deep breath in and out. Now bend your knee, 
Bend up your bottom knee as well if it was straight. And then grab onto the strap with your, for this, this is my left leg, so my left hand. And you're gonna go into the half happy baby. So remember the knee isn't coming directly toward your chest, it's actually coming to the outside of your shoulder. So the outer area, you wanna really bring that knee wide. Now this right leg is bent and then I just sort of let it flop out to the side. Remember that if you need to use a bolster or folded blankets or pillows or yoga blocks under this right knee to close the gap between the floor and the side of the leg, that's great. And actually it's gonna help you be able to sink into the stretch more. The last thing we want is for you to feel uncomfortable about this space, even if it's just kind of subconscious. You don't want to feel uncomfortable and then have your muscles be holding and tense. Remember, yin yoga is a, more of a passive practice where you're really relaxing into the stretch. You don't want to be holding with your muscles. So let go. The only thing that's slightly active in this pose is your arm. Shoulders are relaxed. Breathing is deep and slow. If you prefer to release the strap, you can, holding on to the outside of the foot. So not the inside, but the outside. One more deep breath in and out. And now bring that heel toward your inner thigh, your groin area, and use your hands around the knee to just circle it around a few times. And if you did on the other side, go ahead and grab both legs and circle around in that nice stirring the pot motion just to lubricate up those joints both hip joints evenly, bringing the knees together and then apart. This is a really nice way just to kind of um, make sure the joints feel good. They're not getting locked up. They're not getting overly stressed and taxed. You're just loosening everything up. And now we're going to stretch the legs long out in front of you. Hands overhead, go ahead and let your low back arch a little bit if that feels okay. Reach, 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 toes point away from the fingertips. Everything is long. Deep breath. And we're gonna move into our next pose. Another great hip opener. So come onto your side and then press yourself up into a seated position. I encourage you to get your yoga blocks for this because you might need them. Always have your props handy, bolsters, blocks, blankets, that kind of thing. So put them up toward the top of your mat and we're going to do deer pose. So your front shin is going to be parallel to the front edge of your yoga mat. So this short edge right here, your front shin is parallel. Your back leg, the shin is going to be parallel to the side edge of your yoga mat. Now, there are two different ways we can approach this. Either you can fold forward, crawling your hands forward over your front bent leg, and maybe put your forehead on the blocks. If you want a little bit more, and you really want to get into the internal rotators of this back leg, you're actually going to sit up tall, and you're going to lift your chest, and then have your hands behind you, maybe turned out to the side. You can have your fists on the ground or your flat hands on the ground. The farther you go back, 
the deeper this stretch in the internal rotation is gonna be. And so I encourage you to find, again, your edge. You wanna be going to that point where you're feeling a stretch, a deep stretch, but you're not feeling pain. So I'm gonna stay up on my fists and I'm gonna be nice and tall here. But again, if you want to be leaning forward over the yoga blocks, that's fine too. You're gonna to feel less of an internal rotation on the back leg and you're gonna feel it a little more over the front leg or on the outer hip. So choose whatever your body wants and needs right now. Even though you're slightly active if you're upright, you're slightly active because you are lifting your chest and making sure you're not slumpy like this, that's gonna hurt your body. So you're a little bit lifted through here, but you're nice and relaxed through the hips and the legs. Think heavy and relaxed through the lower part of your body. Breathing deeply. And just coming into the moment. Notice the sensation. Feel your nervous system unwind and come down to a calmer state. Yin yoga is wonderful for calming the mind and body as well as deepening your flexibility. Play with shifting position if you'd like to. I'm going to move on to my flat hands now just to deepen it a little tiny bit. One more deep breath in and out. And now very slowly come out of the pose. You want to move very slowly and with control, with ease, I should really say, with ease. We don't want to jerk anything. You want to really be slow and intentional. Use your body to lift up that leg. That back leg was really the one that was feeling it for me. So now come up. I like to do a little windshield wiper stretch between sides. So legs nice and wide and just drop one knee down and then the other. Breathing deeply. Slow and easy. So now deer pose on the other side. My left side, this leg here, this left leg is parallel to the top edge. The shin is parallel to the top edge of the yoga mat. And my other leg, the shin, is parallel to the side edge of the yoga mat. So forward and side. Now just like before, you're going to have to spend some time feeling what's right in your body and kind of just moving things around, feeling out how you might want to use your props, just shifting into the pose and seeing this sensation of what does that feel like to have internal rotation in the back hip. That's what's going on is internal rotation of the back hip and external rotation of the front hip. So again, there are two different, really two different stretches here. You can full lift lift up your spine and then walk your hands forward and come onto yoga blocks if you like the way it feels to stretch more into that front hip and feel it a little more on the outside of the back hip if that feels good to you then that's great it's nice to turn your palms up so you're not gripping the floor you might need to actually use bolsters or 
something a little firmer than yoga blocks, just play and see what feels good there. If you're very flexible, you can even put your um, forehead on your leg. But I actually like this pose better when I sit up tall and I put my hands behind me in fists. And that allows me to really feel it deeply in the internal rotation of this back leg. I really feel that deep in the hip joint. So do what feels right for you. You want to find your edge and then relax into it and be still as you breathe. Thinking about how good this is for the flexibility of your joints. This yin yoga practice is wonderful for relaxing mind and body and really getting into the connective tissues, including the fascia and the joints. I'm going to put my hands on the ground. You'll find as you go in yin yoga that as you allow your body to sink into the pose, you'll be able to deepen it just a little bit naturally without having to work at it. It just naturally deepens. You're able to naturally soften and go a little farther. One more breath. And now come up onto your fists. I like to use my, my hands to help lift that back leg up very slowly, very slowly, very easily. Place your feet nice and wide. and just windshield wiper your legs. Again, our focus on in this class is happy, healthy hips and a nice open pelvic floor, releasing and relaxing the pelvic floor and the hip muscles. So our next pose is a very deep one. This is sort of the one that we've been working up to. It is called Winged Dragon. So I recommend having your blocks nearby again just in case you need them, and either a blanket or you can fold over your yoga mat on the side of the leg that's behind you, just for a little padding under your back knee. So what we're gonna do to begin is come onto hands and knees. And you can take a minute to just go through a little flowing cat and cow pose, if that feels good to you. This is not yin yoga, but it's nice just to move and stretch the body, inhaling and exhaling. And so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and bring the, again, this is gonna go a blanket or folding over your yoga mat is gonna go under your back knee if you want. It's nice to have that padding. And this front leg is gonna step forward. You're stepping forward to the outside of your yoga mat and also to the outside of your hands. So both of my hands are on the inside. This is where you might want to have yoga blocks. So 
So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that, but I'm gonna remove them now just because I wanna make sure you can see my foot. So what you're gonna do with your foot is first of all, this may be enough right here, even keeping your front leg, just the knee bent over the ankle, just hold it here. That's okay if that's where you are. And even if you need yoga blocks that are up here and you're like, whoa, okay, that is plenty right here, then that's great. Just stay right there, that's fine. If you wanna go a little bit further, then what you can do is bring this foot up, flexing at the ankle, and then turn it out to the side. And you may not be able to see this very well right now, but my knee is actually falling out to the side, kind of like it was in that happy, half happy baby that we did at the beginning. So your foot is flexed for the moment, your leg is dropping out to the side, and then you're just gonna relax that down. So don't keep your foot tense and tight, bent up in the air. You wanna just let everything kind of open out to the side. Now in this pose right here, you're just gonna hang. Now, you can have your hands and fists if that feels good to you. Remember that we're wanting to find our edge. You're wanting to feel that nice stretch, but you don't want pain. And you also want your muscles of your lower body to be able to really relax into this and just open up. So be sure that you are only using your arms right now to hold yourself up. Maybe even hands are on uh, blocks. Or if you are more flexible, you can put your elbows down on blocks or your elbows all the way down on the mat. But just sink into this, feel your hips sinking down toward the yoga mat. That knee is open and flopped out to the side. I'm really on the edge of my foot. So I'm on the edge of my foot and my knee is open out to the side. If this is too much, then you can lie on your back with your knee pulled into your chest. And I'll show you a picture on in the inset video. So you can take a look. If this is just too much, then you can ease out of the pose, lie on your back, and draw your right knee into your chest. Breathe deeply, thinking of breathing into the area where you're really feeling the sensation. Think of opening the joints, softening and unwinding the connective tissues. Release your head toward the floor. We have another 30 seconds. Last inhale and exhale. And then very, very, very slowly, ease out of the pose. I was on my elbows, so now I'm coming up. Bring that foot down onto the ground, flat foot down onto the ground. Maybe heel toe the foot back behind you, so you're back into your hands and knees position. Remove the blanket if you had one. I like to stretch that leg behind me, the one that was just stretched out in front. Just stretch it behind for kind of a counter pose. You can see that even though this is a fairly passive practice with long holds and there's not a lot of movement, you're still getting really deep. 
Now come back onto the hands and knees, maybe a couple rounds of cat and cow. And we move to the other side. So you're gonna now have the, the other leg to the outside of the yoga mat. And remember, you can double up your yoga mat to help pad your knee, or you can use a blanket under the back knee. I really like using a blanket, and almost everybody has a blanket at home. It doesn't have to be some fancy yoga blanket, just a blanket. So you're gonna move that left foot now to the left outer edge of your yoga mat. Both hands are on the inside. So they're not on the outside, they're on the inside. You might stay right here, maybe with your hands up on blocks, maybe with the blocks on their tallest height, and that might be perfectly fine and enough. If you want a little bit more, then you move the foot up, flexing at the ankle, and then the leg flops out to the side. Now I'm resting on the edge of my foot and my knee is opening out to the side. You shouldn't feel any pain in your knee. If you feel any pain in your knee, then go back to the first position, that's fine. You can also repeat the reclined knee to chest if that is what you did on the other side and if that feels better to you, you can just look at the picture that's in the inset video. So remember, open, flex at the ankle, and then open at the knee and just let your leg relax out to the side. Now you can stay up here on your fists or if you can go a little lower, maybe go onto your bent elbows. The leg is open and relaxed and it's totally okay if it feels different between the two sides. You might feel tighter on one side and that's actually really normal. So we're gonna help it and we're gonna ease into the stretch. We're gonna really spend our time Relaxing and breathing into the tight, tight hips. Try to make sure that your butt isn't up in the air. You're really working your hips down toward the yoga mat. Relaxed in the shoulders. Try to make it so that you found your edge and now you're being still and holding with no tension anywhere. You're really letting gravity take you down. Sink those hips down toward the mat. Feel your connective tissues unwind. Feel your joints opening. And if your mind wanders, just bring your attention back to the sensations in your body and to your breath. About 30 more seconds. Now lift your head. Come up onto your spider fingers, your tent fingers. Lift yourself up. Bring that foot flat on the ground. And now walk the foot back. Heel toe the foot back. Remove the blanket. Stretch that leg behind you just to get a different sensation in your body. And now 
couple of cat cows, inhaling and exhaling. One more inhale and exhale. We're gonna go into wide knee child's pose. So feet together, knees are apart. If this is too much, then you can have your knees closer together. But if you really want to get into the groin and the inner thighs and opening up the pelvic floor, then definitely try to keep those knees nice and wide. Sit back onto your heels and you may need yoga blocks or bolsters, blankets, cushions, just have things available and play with what feels good in your body. I'm going to actually put my blanket over my yoga block and see how it feels to stretch the arms out in front of me and let my head rest, my forehead rest on the blanket. So really sink into this pose. Feel your hips settling down toward the floor. If this is too much, you can lie on your back and bring both knees up toward your chest. If you want more, you'll remove the blocks altogether and just place your forehead on the floor. Breathe into your low back, your low belly, and remember to just sink those hips down. Not forcing them down with your muscles, but letting gravity pull your body down in toward the yoga mat, down into the floor. Breathe deeply. This is one of my favorite poses for really opening up the hips and releasing the pelvic floor. We're going to spend about one more minute in this posture. Last deep breath in and out. And now bring your hands back and use your arms to lift yourself up. Bring your knees together and come onto your hips. Straighten out your legs in front of you and we're just gonna release your back, any lingering tensions that there may be with a twist. So come onto your side, as I said before, onto your side first and then roll onto your back. You might wanna have a block close by just in case you need it for the twist. So what you're gonna do is bring your arms out to a T or cactus arms, whatever feels better for you. Shift your hips over to one side. For me, my hips are gonna go over to the right and now both knees are going to fall down toward the left. Inhale, puff up your chest toward the ceiling. And then exhale, sink both shoulders down toward the floor. Now if you needed a block, it might be helpful if you feel tight at all. You can put a block between your knees or you can put a block under your bottom knee. So just play with what feels good for you. Maybe you'll start out with a block under your bottom knee and then maybe your back will unwind and your hips and back and everything will release and you can take it away. So just see what your body needs. 
but try to keep the shoulders flat on the ground as you release into this really nice twist that's great for your digestive system, it's great for your adrenals, it's great for stress and anxiety and just plain good for releasing your back. Let your muscles soften. Let everything just sink into the floor. If you feel any type of tension or holding, then grab your block. Don't be afraid to use your props. It's gonna make it work better if you can actually release and let go. About 30 more seconds. And now if you were using a block, take it out. Use your hands to help bring up your legs. Place your feet on the floor. I always like to do a little bridge between my twist sides to help recenter my body. I also like to stretch everything out nice and long, like a pencil. And then let it go. Bend up the legs. Same twist other side. So arms out in a T or in cactus arms. Shift your hips over to the other side of the mat. Bend both knees and drop them over to the side. Just like before, inhale and puff your chest up toward the ceiling. And then exhale, sink your shoulders down toward the floor. Now, if your top leg is kind of holding because it can't maybe drop all the way down to the mat, then definitely use a yoga block between your knees or underneath your bottom knee, whatever feels most supportive to you. Maybe over time, you'll be able to remove that block altogether, or maybe you'll remove it and then realize, ah, I think I want to put it back because Maybe I had to hold my leg up a little bit. Maybe there was some tension. And the whole point of this style of yoga is to relieve the tension and just sink into the poses. Make sure your neck is relaxed. Your shoulders are relaxed and heavy down to the floor. Evaluate if your body still needs the yoga blocks if you are using them for a support. Maybe you can remove the block. Sink down. And get comfortable with the quiet. Comfortable with the stillness.
Last deep inhale and exhale. Now I like to use my hands to help bring the legs up. Go slow. You're probably kind of off kilter on your mat, so put your feet down. Lift up into a bridge to recenter yourself. And then set your hips down. Your spine is in one nice long line. And let's slide our legs out into our last pose. Arms out at the sides. Shavasana. This is our final pose and it's the most important pose of the whole class. So now is the time to feel the evenness on your body. Feel that both sides are long and lengthened, relaxed and heavy into the floor. Scan your body from your head, the crown of your head, all the way down the back side of your body, the backs of your shoulders, the backs of your hands, the backs of your calves and your heels. Everything is sinking into the floor. If this is hard on your back, you can place a rolled up blanket or bolster underneath your knees so that they're a little bit bent. If you have very open hips or if you just want a little bit more of a stretch, you can also place your feet in a butterfly position and I definitely would suggest that you have blocks for underneath your knees on both sides if you want to do this. A block under your knees so that you can really relax into it. This is only an option for those who want it. I highly recommend, if you can, to do the full Shavasana with your legs out and flat on the ground. It's just a nice way to sink into the earth. Feel fully supported. And relax and let go. Deepen your inhale and exhale. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And roll onto your side. Place your head in your hands for just a moment. And then using your arms, press yourself back up to a seated position. Roll out your shoulders. Look your head up and down. Roll your right ear to your right shoulder and stretch your left arm out to the side. Gently press your head up. Stretch your left ear to your left shoulder and stretch your right arm out to the side. Press your head up and place your hands at your heart. 
the light in me honors and recognizes the light within each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me on this yin yoga journey and this practice, the first of many to come. I hope you enjoyed it. Namaste.